what's going on YouTube today I am going to walk you through how to build a Pi Dash so if you don't know what a Pi Dash is it uses a single board computer also known as a Raspberry Pi there's a thousand of them out there there's faster versions there's a rock Pi that's really fast it'll be used in the future but um, this is our base model and I'm gonna walk you through how to build it um, we've got images that are already made so this makes it a lot easier um, to build them but I'll show you through the basics of you know what parts I'm using um, how I'm building it flashing the image and then getting it up and running so let's get to it ah, so first things first we're gonna lay out our stuff we've got our Raspberry Pi 3B plus that's our um, that's our single board computer comes with an extra cable, we've got a mini keyboard and a mouse, we've got some heat sinks, we've got a memory card, or an SD card rather, we've got a power supply here, we've got our 7 inch touch screen display, and then it also comes with a nice case to put it into. And we've got our single board computer, you guys have never seen one of these? They are pretty slick. These are a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. There's a ton of models out there. This one is really awesome and it, uh, it does the job. And on the back of this, it uses an actual SD card. That's what this guy is for. It uses the SD card to uh, store all of your data on, but also the operating system. So this comes blank. There's nothing on it. You have to install an operating system. Um, then you have to install all the software, select what options you want. Um, there's a, a little bit that goes into the setup of it. And then we do have the touch screen display that we got for ours here, but it's also nice to have a keyboard. You can install an on-screen keyboard, um, but it's not the best, so I prefer to use one of these along with it. So this is a little rechargeable keyboard, mouse. It's really nice, really handy, does the trick. So now is where we're going to get our dash stuff going here. All right, so we're going to need those two there. Set the other ones aside. We can get our display unwrapped. And this is what I really love about these displays is they, they come with almost everything already installed on it. It is a super, super simple setup. And all you've got to do is screw your Raspberry Pi hat onto it like so. And then um, connect your power wires. And for reference, our red is going to be, so it actually tells you on the board here. You can see on the board it's marked right in here. So on this side it's going to be your 5 volts and that's your, um, that's your ground. So 5 volts, we'll put our red connector on and then the black one we'll put our black connector on and then our um, little ribbon cable here so the next thing you'll want to put on the ribbon cable is going to go in this little slot here and then it just bends up and around and goes into your Raspberry Pi you can see that the connections on there, they will face up. There is a little black piece that you can pull on to open the connection. It's kind of tough to see, but you get the idea. There's the little black piece. You pull that out, then you put your ribbon cable in. We'll make sure we get this seated well. And then we will put the black piece back in. I'll show you again. It looks just like that. Then we go here with our pie on top. I'm going to use the screws that came in our kit to, to mount the Raspberry Pi onto our display. I 
here we go. Raspberry Pi is mounted on the back of our 7 inch touchscreen display. Then what we need to do is connect these two to power here. So right now there's nothing connecting power between board to board. That's where these come in. These are what gives power from the bottom board to the top board. And then you'll plug your main power into the display and it will give power up to your um, up to your Pi. So our see if I can get a closer look for you guys. So our power is going to go on this pin right here and then the ground will go on the pin right next to it. So we'll go right like this, right like this, there we go. And I usually like to wrap these around a little bit just to make it so it's not such a mess, but we'll leave it like that for now. Next is our ribbon cable and the ribbon cable is just going to wrap up and around, goes right in here. So this black connector can come out. Then we can seat our ribbon cable in. And then the black connector goes in. Like so. So the next piece of the puzzle is our SD card, which is this guy there. Now listen good. If you're going to get an SD card for this, you need to get a class 10 SD card, which means it's the fastest one possible. If you don't, it'll run really slow, even slower than it already does. So these single board computers, the Raspberry Pis aren't known for their super fast processing power. So if you bog it down with not getting the right SD card, um, it's not going to work the way you want it to. So again, we'll take this guy out and we're going to plug him into our computer and this is where it gets interesting. So let's take a look. The first thing that we've got to do here is get our SD card into its adapter and then we are going to format this appropriately so that it can be used the way that we want. All right, so we're going to go in here and we're going to format this. The drive is F. You can refresh if it doesn't find it. Format options are in here. We're going to do a quick format. And we're going to label this whatever you want it to be. There we go. So now we have a formatted drive and the main thing to look for is the format file system. It's very important. So we've got that done. Next thing we're going to do is write our image onto this card. So we have a image writer here. We're going to select our image that we want. got our image there and then we're going to select to write that image onto our SD card. This process usually takes a while but this is what's going to write your base image onto the SD card. Um, there is a lot more to this. I have already created an image on a Pi and then I have backed it up. So this is a copy of an image that I've already created. It's got a operating system on it, it's got Tuner Studio installed on it, it's got uh, Megalog Viewer installed on it, and it's got all of the settings so that it will auto start up and run initially um, when, you, when you first turn it on. So we're going to cut to getting this done. There we go. So now the write is successful, that means it is done, and this has an image on it that we can boot up onto our Pi Dash. So now we're going to remove our SD card. We're going to go in here, remove this guy, save to eject. There we go. Now let's go back over to our Pi Dash and we will get this going. So now that we've got our SD card image, we're going to take the small card out. 
And this guy has, on the back of it, a SD card port right there. So we're going to slide our SD card in there. We're building a BMF dash. So now with our SD card in there, we can fire this up. So we'll plug power in. Watch. So it's going to boot up the operating system. And then it's going to go through the startup sequence. After it's done with the startup sequence, then it's going to open up our dash. And we have our image set on there in the background. And then it's going to load Tuner Studio. And it's going to open right into our dash mode. That's how we have it set up. And it will open our dash mode. There we go. So this is this is the same one that we had. We'll go into our demo mode. You'll see it's the same one that we. There we go. So that's what we'll look like when we get it uh, all said and done. As you can see, we've got this ready to rock. The last piece of the puzzle is making sure that our communication settings are properly set up. So on this guy, the nice thing about communications with this is it's very easy. You go to communications and settings, and it's still going to be um, the RS-232 serial interface, but instead of being a USB COM port there, it will ask you when you have this connected, um, whatever COM port is available, you'll be able to select it. So typically, you can see this one right here says dev TTY AMAO. If we were using a USB to serial converter, it would come up in that list right there and it would say um, it would say USB. Let me go grab my cable and I'll show you. So here you can see I've got my USB to serial cable. When I plug this guy in, it will give me the option to select it. So we're going to hit cancel on this, and we'll go back into settings here. The other nice thing to have is one of these little keypads. It's a wireless mouse um, and keypad all together, and it just makes it makes it super simple. The touch screen is fine, but the, it, it gets a little bit, um, that's not where I wanted to go. It gets a little hard to hit some of these smaller buttons, like if I go to communications and settings, like sometimes you'll hit the data rate sometimes you can actually hit settings but works really good okay so we've got our RS-232 serial interface there and then here you can see right there we've got the dev TTY USB 0 so you can see that right there is our USB 0 now depending on what port you plug into um, uh, it, it's different so each one of these ports on the side will come up different so there's zero one two three four so depending on which one you select or which one you plug it into you have to select the appropriate one there so so we can select that guy hit accept lovely look at that and then you save your tune and when this guy pops back up it'll be set with all of those settings so it'll be set up to use that port that we're plugged into right there. So for testing purposes, I will show you how it works uh, with mine. And that is because mine's got my tune on it. Um, and it's already set up to communicate. So Again, I've got my USB cable plugged in. I just powered up my dash. 
and I'm going to plug this into the ECU. And you can see she's powering up, going through the boot up. And if I plugged it into the correct USB, USB port, it should come right up. So this one's loaded with my project on it. That way it'll actually communicate and not throw errors. Turn the car on. And there we go. So it's going to go online and you can see we're looking at live data on the car right now. So the sensors are jumping around on this because uh, the engine's not in the car. So right, <laughs> right now you're just looking at data that, that isn't really accurate. None of these sensors are coming in. So, But there you have it. Simple to connect and as long as you plug the USB um, cable into the same port every time it'll come up and it'll be happy as can be so we're gonna go ahead and shut this guy down we're gonna shut the car down and that's gonna put that project under wrap there you have it a uh, build out of a we're gonna call it a BMF dash so um, with this, you get a custom uh, gauge cluster that is designed by me. I can also design a slew of other ones. If you like the standard ones, that's fine too, I understand, but um, if you get them through me, you get the uh, the gauge cluster that I designed. I can uh, tweak it a little bit to fit your car. If you've got a little bit different of a, a mega squirt, if it's an MS3 or whatever, we can make it work as long as I get uh, the project files and all that stuff. So, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. If you want to check these out, um, I should have them on the website here soon. So, all the stuff's in the description below. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next video.